The Value of Believing in Yourself, The Story of Louis Pauster, by Spencer Johnson, M.D. Once upon a time, in far-off France, there lived a man named Louis Pauster. Now and then, this man, who was a doctor of science, would put on his tall black hat and his bright orange coat and walk in the park. I believe I can. I believe I can, he would say to himself as he went along. What do you think it was that Louis Pauster believed he could do? It was something important, so important that Louis Pauster didn't even notice the other people in the park. I must find the invisible enemy, he said. I must find the rabies germs that hide inside people and make them sick so sick they die. Once I find that invisible enemy, I'll think of a way to kill it. Then sick people will be well again. Louis Pasteur sat on a bench and thought about the invisible enemy. What a silly man, said some children who happened to be near. If an enemy is invisible, that means no one can see it. If no one can see it, no one can find it. Louis Pasteur pretended that he didn't hear those nosy children. He hurried to his laboratory on Alm Street in Paris, where he worked every day. Some of the children followed him. So did some grown-ups, who wanted to know what he was doing. They peeped through the laboratory window. You'll never do it, they shouted. No one can find an invisible enemy. Louis Pasteur didn't care what the children thought. He didn't care what the grown-ups thought either. He believed in himself. I know I'm right, he said. I'm sure I can do it. So, because he believed in himself, he kept on working. He kept on doing what he thought was right. It was hard work, but Louis Pasteur was happy. He knew that if he did find the invisible enemy, the rabies germs, he could help many sick people to be well again. While the mean children laughed and poked fun at Louis Pasteur, who was working in his laboratory in France, a little boy was laughing and poking a stick at a poor, sick dog in another land far away, a land called Germany. The boy's name was Joey. He wasn't really a cruel little boy. He was just thoughtless, as children sometimes are, and he liked to tease as children sometimes do. Soon, Joey could see that the dog was very mad. He even had white foam around his mouth, foam like whipped cream. He tried to bark as if to say, Stop it! Stop it! But he couldn't bark. Something was wrong. Do you know what was wrong? Suppose you could look inside that dog with a great magnifying glass or a microscope. What would you see? That's right. You'd see the invisible enemy, the rabies germs that were making the dog so sick. The dog was so sick and so mad that he would bite at anything, even at the rocks or the trees. If he could, he would surely bite the boy who had poked a stick at him. When Joey went off, he didn't notice one very important thing. Can you see what that thing was? Yes, it was the gate. The gate in the fence had come open. The mad, sick dog could get out. He could run after Joey and bite him. That's exactly what the dog did. Ouch! Ouch! cried Joey as the mad, sick dog bit him on the arms and the legs. And then it happened. The invisible enemy, the rabies germs that were hiding in the dog, traveled from the dog's foaming mouth into the little boy. Help, help, Joey shouted. Daddy, please help me. Joey's father heard, and he ran out of his cottage to see what was the matter. When he saw the dog biting his little boy, he was terribly afraid. Yes, he was a big, strong man, but he was afraid. Sometimes even daddies are afraid. But Joey's father was brave. 
He ran toward the dog. Get away! Get away! He shouted at the dog. He waved his arms and stamped his feet. The dog ran off. Joey's father chased the dog back through the gate. When the dog was safely behind the fence, Joey's father carefully closed the gate. But the damage had already been done. The little boy was lying on the ground, crying and bleeding. He had been bitten 14 times. I'm afraid my boy is going to be very sick, said Joey's father to himself. The little boy now had the invisible enemy, the rabies germs, hiding inside him. Soon he was not only hurt and tired, he was sick. Everyone who knew Joey was sad. Everyone knew that if a person was bitten by a sick, mad dog, that person would surely die. Before long, the sick dog died. It was very quiet in Joey's home. His parents did not know how to help Joey. They could only wait. Then, one day, there was news. Joey's mother saw it first, and she shouted for joy. Wonderful! Wonderful! she cried. How could she think anything was wonderful when her little boy was dying? What do you think she had read in the newspaper? A doctor of science has found a way to save people like Joey, she said. He says sick people like Joey have been invaded by an invisible enemy. He has found the enemy, and he has also found a way to kill it. Do you know who the man was? Of course, it was Louis Pasteur, the man who believed in himself. He had known he was right, and he had done what he had set out to do. Father, we'll need a carriage, said Joey's mother. We must take Joey to Paris to see Dr. Louis Pasteur. Perhaps he can save Joey's life. Joey's father ran. He hired a fine carriage and a stout and able coachman. Six fast white horses were hitched to the carriage. Joey's parents wrapped Joey up in warm, soft blankets and put him into the carriage. I wish the dog hadn't died, said Joey sadly. At least I wish I hadn't poked that dog with a stick. Let's go, shouted the coachman. We haven't a second to lose. Hurry, said Joey's mother as the horses galloped down the long, long road to Paris. Hurry, pleaded Joey's father. Even the trees beside the road seemed to whisper, Hurry, hurry, faster, faster. They were tired and dusty when they arrived at Louis Pasteur's door, but they were happy to be there. They knocked, and Louis Pasteur opened the door and welcomed them. Dr. Pasteur, said the mother, as she smiled a brave smile, we have come a long way to see you. Our little boy was bitten by a mad dog, and he's very sick. Can you help us? Perhaps, said Louis Pasteur, I have found a way to kill the invisible enemy, those rabies germs that hide inside of sick animals. Perhaps I can kill the ones that are hidden in your little boy. I have invented a vaccine, explained Louis Pasteur. In my vaccine are magical soldiers with bright eyes that can see in the dark. When they see the invisible enemy inside of Joey, my magical soldiers, who are very strong, will kill that enemy. Joey had been put into bed. When he heard Louis Pasteur say this, he rose up a little. Dr. Pasteur, he said, do you mean your magical soldiers will be inside of me? Yes, said Louis Pasteur. Joey looked puzzled. But how will they get there? Very easily, said Louis Pasteur. My magical soldiers can march through long needles and into little boys. They march together like a mighty army. But needles hurt, said Joey. Sometimes, admitted Dr. Pasteur. But can you be brave, Joey, while my magical soldiers march into you? I'll be very brave, promised Joey. Then you will be the first person to have a shot of my rabies vaccine, said Louis Pasteur. This worried Joey's father. 
The very first person? He wondered. Will it be dangerous? Are you sure your vaccine will work on the little boy? I believe it will, said Louis Pasteur, and he gave Joey his shot. The magical soldiers marched into the little boy. When they got inside Joey, they found that it was dark. The magical soldiers peered here and there with their magical eyes. At last, they spotted the enemy, those rabies germs that had always been invisible. Until now. At first, they saw only twelve. Can you see them, too? They knew that there were really millions of germs inside Joey. You'll never beat us, said the terrible germs. Yes, we will, cried the magical soldiers. The battle began. The magical soldiers attacked the invisible enemy and fought bravely. It wasn't very comfortable for Joey. Would you be comfortable if you had an army of magical soldiers fighting a war inside you? But as the soldiers in the rabies vaccine killed more and more of the enemy, Joey felt better and better. When the last of the enemy had been beaten, Joey felt well, so well that he jumped out of bed and danced around in a circle with his mother, his father, and of course with Dr. Louis Pasteur, who felt as much like dancing as any of them. Hurrah! Hurrah! they all shouted. Then Joey thanked Louis Pasteur and rode back home to Germany in the carriage with his mother and father. In Joey's village, the people lined the streets. They laughed and waved to Joey. Everyone was so happy that he was alive. Even the yellow sun in the sky seemed happy. Above the rooftops, the village bells rang out, a joyful tune. They seemed to be singing, Safe! Safe! Now everyone is safe. No one has to die of rabies. Meanwhile, back in France, where he lived and worked, many people now wanted to talk to Dr. Pasteur. Dr. Pasteur, said some of the children, we think you are wonderful. You found the cure for rabies. Yes, I did, smiled Dr. Pasteur, and I am very happy. But do you know what made me feel so good while I was trying to find the cure? When I was working in my laboratory, Dr. Pasteur said, I enjoyed the times when I believed in myself. In those days, I didn't always succeed. But even if I didn't, it always felt good to believe that I could. As you can see, our story ends happily, and now perhaps... You might like to think about yourself. Of course, what you may decide to do in your own life may be very different indeed, but whatever you choose for yourself, let's hope it will make you happier. Just like our good friend, Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur was born in Dole, in the province of Dura, France, in 1822. As a chemist and later as a bacteriologist, Pasteur did more than any other man of his time to further medical progress. However, because he was not a physician, many medical men of the 1800s jeered at his theories. He ignored their scorn because he believed so strongly that bacteria or germs did indeed exist, and that they could cause disease. He continued to work in his own way, having faith in himself, and eventually discovered the cure for a silkworm disease, for anthrax, and for rabies. Pasteur also invented a process to keep milk from spoiling. It consisted of heating the milk to 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes then cooling it quickly and keeping it in sealed, sterile containers. This process is still used today to keep milk free from germs. It is called pasteurization. Pasteur married Marie Laurent of Strasbourg, whom he loved deeply. 
She encouraged him always to put his laboratory first, and so he was able to concentrate on his work and do it well. When little Joseph Meister was bitten fourteen times by a rabid dog and was brought to Louis Pasteur, the scientist hesitated to give his untried rabies vaccine to the boy. He did so only after two physicians pointed out that the boy would surely die without the vaccine, and that Pasteur just might have the answer. Pasteur did have the answer, of course, and he saved Joseph Meister's life. Meister later became a gatekeeper at the Pasteur Institute. He stayed there, loyal to Louis Pasteur for the rest of his life. While Pasteur certainly believed in himself, he remained a quiet and humble man until his death in 1895. In his later years, he was always a little amazed and amused by the fuss that people made over him. Once he accepted an invitation to attend an international medical meeting in London. When he arrived, a steward asked him to come to the front of the assembly hall. Pasteur walked forward, and the members rose to their feet and applauded. Pasteur seemed somewhat disappointed. "'The Prince of Wales must be arriving,' he said. "'I wish we had arrived earlier so we might gain a better view of him.' But the chairman of the group only held out his hand to Pasteur. "'No,' he said. "'It is for you. It is you they are cheering.' 